Hi, I'm Oscar. Hi, I'm Colin. Um, so Colin, welcome to Better Talks. Thanks. Um, a new face for Better Talks. Um, special face because uh, you're an intern and yes. you're an intern um, finishing your studies and uh, you're at bed a bit, but you're actually working for a client project. Yes, that's correct. And um, uh, your client project is at Virtual Vaults. Yes. Uh, which is partner, cloud native solution. Um, what is your assignment about? Uh, uh, I know, but... Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> Let's my start. assignment is uh, all about resiliency. resiliency. So um, the application in all kind of turbulent situations, uh, mm -hmm. APIs are down, uh, key vaults are uh, denying access, uh, failovers are happening. So mm -hmm. it's all about uh, turbulent and chaos. Yeah, because we know like cloud, cloud environment, um, and we try to keep things running and uh, the guys at Microsoft try to keep Azure running. Mm -hmm. um, but you have all kinds of outages, um, software-based that you introduce yourself, but you can have some issues because in some region we have some outage. Um, or it's not behaving as you expected on the load or something like that. Or even on the front end, um, you might have a connection loss, which mm -hmm. your client might see. So you went through all those levels of what could possibly go wrong, yeah. and we found most of them, I guess. Um, so first of all, our front-end application talking to the APIs. What mm -hmm. if an API is down? What does it cause, right? Because it's a yeah. cascading situation uh, in there um, with just, yeah, like this API is down and then you cannot do that. And we want to um, have the, the process for the user still as, as usable as possible, even though we made a mistake or some resource is down. Um, so after the whole like resiliency in the application yourself. You put some retry mechanism mm -hmm. in there. Yeah. Uh, learn a lot, I guess. Uh, very much. <laughs> <laughs> so that was fun. Um, but part of your investigation was about chaos engineering. Yes, chaos and, engineering. And um, then uh, specifically Azure Chaos Studio from uh, Microsoft. Yes, and because it's a new resource? Mm -hmm. Yes, that's a, a resource in, uh, in Azure that mm -hmm. is still in, uh, in public preview. Uh, okay. So it's really new. But we can uh, use it. So we can it's use public it. Yes, that's nice. it is. A, it is a free resource until uh, 16 January 2024. Um, oh. Only the resource is free. Uh, when you uh, f yeah, trigger failovers or things like that, and your resources need to adjust and upscale and things of like course. that, that's you pay platform. for that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so basically, chaos engineering. It's mm -hmm. a term that um, yeah, not everyone is on the level to actually mm -hmm. uh, uh, look at it, and we know it from. Uh, the Netflix and, and yeah. the big guys in the world. Yeah, that's a really great example. So they, they have the Simeon Army, right? Mm -hmm. That, that um, years ago they were already experimenting with, let's just kick over some resources in production. Um, you didn't do that, right? No, no, no. <laughs> okay, well, that's good. I wasn't know. allowed. <laughs> um, but you did do some experiments with Azure Chaos Studio. Yes. Can you walk through us? Because, well, I've seen it now, mm -hmm. but like, uh, a couple of days ago, I didn't know anything about it yeah. yet, uh, just the concept. Um, so what can you do with it? Um, well, you can uh, imitate real-world failures into mm -hmm. your application. Um, the failures you trigger are real. They are not just uh, pretending to be failures. They mm -hmm. are real failures. Yeah. Uh, you can uh, trigger Cosmos DB failovers. You can uh, deny access on the key vault. Uh, mm -hmm. You can uh, put load on your uh, CPU from a virtual machine. OK, so Lo but load is really a clear example, right? Mm -hmm. Like, what if the system is on the load without having to write a load test that simulates it? But yeah. this is like, it's behaving weirdly out of memory or CPU is is a, an issue that we all saw production once. Mm -hmm. um, so it's it's cool to do that. And, and Chaos Studio helps you with um, creating that on your resource. So it's yes. actually creating some side load somehow on your CPU. Yeah. Um, on your actual resource. Yes, it is. Uh, it is done on your actual resource. And would you then do that, um, like in a in a really controlled scenario, or the different levels there? Um, well, I think preferred uh, in a really controlled scenario. Uh, mm -hmm. They have from chaos engineering. They have uh, different uh, yeah aspects they uh, they want. Mm -hmm. So you start with this, uh, defining the steady state of your application. Uh, mm -hmm. What's happening when everything is healthy? Yeah. Uh, then you're going to make a hypothesis. Uh, what do you expect to happen when you uh, trigger an experiment? Mm -hmm. um, then you're going to do the experiment itself. Uh, and following, you will uh, monitor everything. And the experiment, because that's a mm -hmm. terminology used in, in uh, yeah. Azure Chaos Studio, experiment. Is, is basically simulating or like yeah, that's uh, creating the actual, event. the actual fault you uh, trigger uh, okay. on your actual resource. OK, but I'm interested because um, it, Chaos Studio is a resource, so mm -hmm. you create it. And yeah. in that, you need to somehow say, 
I want these faults to be have uh, to uh, happen because not um, we're not using every type of resource. And mm -hmm. a good example is CPU load and VM. Well, for our um, situation, that wasn't very. We are not really VM based, so mm -hmm. uh, useless. Let's say that. Um, but things like a Cosmos failover is mm -hmm. something you would not be able to click yourself. Like no. you cannot just fail it um, no. on Azure. Uh, you have to wait a long time to that actually happens in production once, and then you hope it's, everything's good. Mm -hmm. So let's uh, uh, let's go into the portal. Approach that. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, here you have the screen for the KL Studio. Uh, so this as is you just can see, going to a resource, creating yeah. a new resource. Right? Exactly. Uh, you can search it in the search bar, and uh, you'll be here. Okay. Uh, like it says, it's still in preview. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. In the targets, you can uh, enable your target resources. So uh, the resource you want your experiment to target. Yeah. Um, like your Cosmos account. Or yeah, VM, exactly. Yeah? Your Cosmos resource uh, and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, in the actual experiments itself, uh, this is the overview. I uh, at the moment, I have one mm -hmm. uh, experiment. It's a test chaos Cosmos. Yeah. Um, and at the top here, you can create an experiment. Okay. Then you'll be in this screen. Uh, the experiment is created into a dem or into a, a resource group. Yeah, so this is basically an Azure resource like yeah, everything. Yeah, exactly. You can, can imagine you can make this with Bicep as yeah, well. Yeah, you can create this with Bicep, okay. uh, ARM templates. Uh, it's all possible. Uh, you need to define a name. So uh, let's say demo beta talks. Uh, cool. And then there you can go into the experiment designer. Mm -hmm. Need to load. Have some time to load. So this is the experiment designer. Yeah. Uh, as you can see, you have steps, you have branches, uh, you can add an action. So let's go uh, through it step by step. Um, steps are run uh, sequentially. So yeah. uh, when the first step is done, uh, you can run another step. Um, it's all so one after the other. You create an experiment, but mm -hmm. the experiment you can execute. Like you yeah, would you execute can, a build pipeline. You can anything. execute multiple experiments. So uh, you, maybe you want to trigger a Cosmos DB and at the same time uh, after the, the, experiment, the first experiment has been done. You want to go to the second where you uh, have a key vault that has deny access. So you can do this uh, one after the other, and these won't run at the same time. That sounds like a fun Friday afternoon in production. Yeah, but, okay. of course. Uh, then you have branches. Uh, each step uh, consists of branches. Mm -hmm. uh, and branches are run uh, subsequently. So they run uh, in parallel. OK. Um, in so within each, a step, those branches kick off all at the yeah, same time. all at the same it. time, okay. and that's it. So you can orchestrate kind of a workflow is like, well, this thing first, and then mm -hmm. these two things are happening, and then that one, yeah. and that one, and then we have a recovery, for instance. Yeah. OK. Uh, then uh, in a branch, you can add an action. Mm -hmm. uh, you have two kind of actions that are yeah. uh, faults and delays. Um, delays are useful uh, if you need some cleanup time after an experiment. Mm -hmm. um, don't yeah, really okay, but also to orchestrate like intermittent failure, yeah. I guess. Uh, yeah, especially if you have a step after this, uh, and maybe you need to wait until ev everything is fully recovered and mm -hmm. uh, everything is in healthy state again, then start off the next step. Uh, so you can add yeah. a delay. Okay. Because you want a measurable experiment, basically. Yeah. That's why you want a stable state and yeah. stuff like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, then you can also add an actual fault. Yeah. Uh, then another screen pops up. Uh, mm -hmm. Here you have the fault list. These are all the uh, access of the available faults at the moment. Mm -hmm. uh, as you can see, uh, AKS, that's Azure Kubernetes. Um, oh, so this is a combination between all the things that could go wrong that are supported yeah. over all the resources that are available yeah, at the moment. Exactly. Okay. Um, yeah, so uh, there are a few examples AKS, uh, Azure mm -hmm. Cache for Redish, uh, physical memory pressure, uh, a lot of uh, these kind of things. Yeah, and things like memory pressure and mm -hmm. stuff is mostly for VMs, I guess. Yes, yeah, it is. Or is it also App Service? No, it's only for VMs at the moment. App Service not supported. Okay. App Service is because not supported. Because that was one of your uh, yeah. uh, your targets. Um, yeah. So not yet. No, I not guess. yet. Um, Microsoft has said that they are uh, really busy with it mm -hmm. uh, and try to uh, release as much as possible. But for now, they uh, only did the faults that are most common and most known uh, yeah, before I expanding. Can imagine some low hanging fruit in services exactly. like, like Cosmos for uh, is is pretty new, it's cloud native, so I can imagine they have mm -hmm. some more hooks to be able to, yeah. to kick that off. Well, let's uh, take Cosmos for an example. Mm -hmm. um, here you have a few parameters. Yeah. Uh, at first you have the duration, so that's mm -hmm. the actual duration how of the experiment, how long it will take. Uh, and then the read region, well, that is the region, uh, the region where your uh, Cosmos DB will fill okay. over to. So this is a um, pretty specific scenario because yeah. your Cosmos DB, you can set up a single region. You, mm -hmm. you have a SLA problem then. Um, 
And then the, if you don't do the multi-read write region, you mm -hmm. actually specify read region and it will replicate there on on failure. It should, with the self, uh, same connection string, which should re fail over to that one. Yeah. So reading writing from there. So this mm -hmm. is the one you would specify there. Yeah. So. Um, for example, we now have West Europe. Uh, we want it to fill over into North Europe. Mm -hmm. uh, you specify it here, uh, and now for 10 minutes, all your uh, calls from Cosmos DB will go to North Europe. Your North Europe will be uh, your right region. Mm -hmm. So basically, um, also the next button is target resources, of yeah. course. So basically you say, um, this is the one I want to fail over to because this is the scenario I'm expecting in my setup. It's mm -hmm. pretty specific already because yeah. If you don't have a read region in North Europe, this mm -hmm. experiment, you won't be able to select the target resources, I guess. No, uh, actually, if you're uh, specifying a read region that you have not defined in your resource, it will mm -hmm. fail. Uh, the experiment won't even be executed. Oh, it just stops because it just stops. The, the, the assumption safety. is not correct. No, uh, okay. um, it, it triggers a fail over that doesn't exist, so it, uh, it just fails. Or okay. it, doesn't e it doesn't even start. Okay, so if you, if you continue this, mm -hmm. um, how does it take control because you, you you create that experiment, mm -hmm. you pointed at some resources, does this automatically have full control on it? Does no. It um, when you go into the next part, mm -hmm. um, a lot of errors. Yeah, well, it's, some uh, <laughs> yeah, the most important thing is the banner. Yeah. Um, it says before starting your experiment, you need to assign the experiment identity to each target resource targeted. Okay, when so creating the experiment, uh, a managed identity is created, mm -hmm. and that managed identity needs to be added into the target resource as a uh, in a role assignment in yeah, the IAM. Yeah, of course, because it needs like some kind of management yeah. permissions mm -hmm. um, to be able to to actually stop that thing. Um, exactly. Okay, awesome. So this just creates an experiment with the managed identity. And if you, you give the proper permission, then when yeah. the experiment starts. Yeah, and these uh, permissions can all be found in, the, in the, the Microsoft documentation. I have a tab for uh, open for it here. Mm -hmm. So here we have... Uh, yeah, you need specific uh, exactly. access so for that. Here right? we have Microsoft Cosmos DB. Uh, suggested role assignment is Cosmos DB operator. Mm -hmm. So you need to add your experiment into the Cosmos DB operator role okay. in your Makes Cosmos DB resource. Sense. Okay, so that's and that's same for all the other resources. That's so same if you have for a VM. You need some control. Yeah, on exactly. Uh, depending on what, uh, yeah, what kind of resource it is, you need to add it into the role assignment. Yeah, yeah you, you get into really specifics here. And and what if like you have the experiment and mm -hmm. then it runs and uh, you have to monitor your application to see if it works. Like yeah, it's a, this experiment will will do whatever. Mm -hmm. And if your your application fails, like that's something you can see. So on the other part, what what you did, did you like create a test automation around it to, to monitor, or do you just uh, click around? No, we, uh, we opened uh, application insights, mm -hmm. and there was a latency uh, graphic. Yeah. Uh, and we could see that uh, West Europe uh, peaked, uh, spiked up, and yeah. then it went down to uh, zero milliseconds. Okay. And after that, North Europe picked it up, and uh, North Europe had, the, had all the calls. So you saw, actually saw the behavior saw, of yeah. an inline failover, yeah. and it worked, it apparently. Worked. Otherwise. It worked uh, perfectly. And, and while doing that, you just created some custom load or you were... Yeah, I, uh, I ran a playwright uh, script at the back that just constantly uh, triggered Cosmos DB that, uh, that there was some load into the, into the graphic. So you like your internship, you really got the whole palette of Azure. I'm a on. very lucky guy. <laughs> I'm a very lucky guy. So he went into playwright, test automation, yeah. doing some resilience building and, and experimented with this. I think that is, uh, that's a lot uh, yeah. for, uh, uh, for an assignment like that. Um, and, and the experiment, did you start it from the portal or was that something you, you normally would say, well, I'm just going to run this in pipelines mm -hmm. or something? Well, I personally started it in the portal because mm -hmm. these were the, the first tests. Mm -hmm. uh, but in the future, uh, they will run in pipelines. Um, the pipelines need to be run in parallel because if you make it a step, uh, the experiment needs to be executed before it is uh, going to the next step. So it need, okay. needs to be finished before uh, the next step is triggered. Yeah, okay. So to orchestrate that, you need to figure out yourself how I want yeah. to run this because it's a bit exactly. ridiculous. Like I'm going to run chaos just before the deployment or just after because it's a bit, mm -hmm. what do you want to test there? So yeah. uh, it's more of your part of your test suite than of your deployment suite, I guess. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's, that's very interesting. Um, which... Um, yeah, which actions, which failures would you wanted to have, which you were missing most? Uh, yeah, that's a good one. Uh, we Maybe use the some, team is watching, so yeah, we can uh, put some We use some, uh, some SQL databases, so mm -hmm. um, it would be nice to have those uh, in, in a failover. Yeah, we have the failover groups uh, yeah, set exactly. up for that, so exactly. we should so be ready for them. Cosmos DB can fill over, but the SQL uh, not yet, so mm -hmm. uh, that would be a nice one. Uh, and 
we use a lot of app services. Yeah. Uh, I think app service related failures uh, would come in handy. Um, yeah, yeah, like some CPU or memory pressure there yeah. is, uh, is easier to do than to create some custom performance test to create it. Uh, so that would be nice. Yeah, those um, would be fun. Yeah, and those are a pretty cloud-native uh, resource that we use since the beginning. I think a lot of people are using them, so that uh, that makes complete sense to uh, start. A bit of shame that we didn't have it, but uh, I like that we could do the full file over in, uh, in yeah. Cosmos DB. It was uh, very cool to see. And we'll we'll keep an eye over on uh, the, these resource types because I can imagine the, the list will expand and mm -hmm. expand. And um, um, I think, um, yeah, we uh, we had this for on, uh, on our roadmap for a while to look into and then it's really nice to uh, uh, to see to have someone just full focus on this um, um, yeah and there you have it like it's it's really cool um, is there is there anything else uh, that I missed on this or uh, no I, I don't think I so. think I, it's plenty right I think it's uh, it's more than enough so um, yeah awesome uh, thanks Colin yeah. um, thank you so, yeah well <laughs> it was fun um, so Azure Chaos Studio, look into it, look into the, the failure types. Um, if you want to go you know, like next level with your system, um, this is it, I guess. And um, if you want to know anything about it, like he touched it well, so he's a specialist now. Uh, Thanks. That's, that's how Thanks we do about it. it. <laughs> that's good. So uh, thank you for watching and uh, see you next time. Bye. Bye.